Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to do a comparison of OEM manufacturers versus aftermarket. Is there a quality trade-off? Do you get more bang for your buck one way or the other? I'm asked these kinds of questions all the time, asked to give my opinion to customers when they're evaluating, so I figured we'll do a comparison on snow pushers today and let you make the decision. So quick background, I'm an aftermarket dealer. I don't work with any of the OEMs, so I don't work with John Deere or Kubota or anybody else. So these are my own products that I source directly from aftermarket manufacturers that make all sorts of tractor attachments for the front end, for the back end. And so since snow season is upon us, I figured it's a good time to compare snow pushers. So specifically for this video, we're going to take the 1025R or just think about a subcompact tractor in general. We're going to compare the Frontier brand from John Deere, compare the HLA, which is an aftermarket you see behind me, and then the Land Pride, which is a Kubota owned brand. So we're going to give you a comparison on pricing today, as well as the features, the construction, and the warranty. But before we get to that, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below. We put out tractor videos all the time, so make sure you don't miss another one. And we pride ourselves on providing the best value tractor attachments that money can buy. So they are going to be feature rich, high quality, and competitively priced. If you want to see what's available for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. We ship attached all over the country. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. They are made in America and have a lifetime warranty on them. If you're looking to add some stability to your tractor, then make sure you check out Bora. Now, before we get to the comparison, I want to fill you in. I'm going to do a little testing in the future. We're going to actually apply these materials today. These are all sprays of different uh, kinds, you know, maybe right in your kitchen even. But these are things that I found online that were either recommended on forums or uh, maybe customers sent them to me or just some I, I just happened to find doing some research. But these are anti-stick or uh, products that reduce friction, uh, things that are going to repel snow and ice from sticking. So these could be good for a snowblower chute, uh, for your snow pusher, for your snow plow, any location on your equipment that you don't want snow to get stuck and trapped to. So we're going to tape off the pusher and apply each one of these products to a different section of it. And then when we actually have some snow to take care of, we're going to test it out and see how it goes. So that's another reason to subscribe for a future video. Now, I don't want anybody confusing us for Project Farm around here, although he was a, an inspiration for us to do this video, but we bought these sprays last year and now just finally had a chance to start with this experiment. And I realized partway through I didn't have a control, so I ended up leaving the middle section um, clean, you know, un, unsprayed, unlubricated without anything on there. And we used one of the products over on the snowblower chute. It's specifically a chute lube, <laughs> I think it was called. So uh, I'll tell you, the fluid film is what I found to be most common, uh, most popular online and from what folks had recommended to me. So that's over in the corner and kind of did the sidewalls as well. And I'll tell you, that is the smelliest one of all of these sprays. The Pam, you might have that in your kitchen already, so that could be a cheap option for you. But we're gonna see, got a couple other ones here as well. And some of these are drying a lot quicker. Uh, the Pam is very liquidy still. And the fluid film is definitely, it's a film. You know, these other ones, the nonstick spray, what is it? Oh, it's a, it's a polymer treatment. Okay, interesting. And then we have a, a DuPont product, the snow and ice repellent. So we have a few good ones here. I think it's gonna be exciting to see how they perform, if there's any difference compared to the control. It's gonna depend on your snow conditions too, but either way, it's a cheap, fun experiment. It's gonna be interesting to see the results. All right, now back to the topic at hand. So what we're gonna to compare today is gonna to be a 60 inch wide snow pusher. And while this is a 54 inch wide pusher, and typically what I would recommend for a subcompact tractor, Frontier and Land Pride don't offer a 54. Um, the smallest I could find in the Frontier is gonna be a 60 inch, and then Land Pride had a 48 or a 60 inch. So to keep it apples to apples, let's stick with 60 inch, and we'll do all our comparisons based off of that. All right, so as far as pricing goes, this is a bit of a moving target, all right, because steel prices are fluctuating all over the place. Some prices that I can find online for the Frontier and the Land Pride could vary from dealer to dealer as well, but we're gonna do a basic setup, all right? So just the main pusher box, not with all the, the fancy edges and back drags that are on there, but just the main pusher box and then a mount on the back. And so our pricing for that configuration, and we're assuming local pickup is gonna be $1,300 for the Land Pride. It's gonna be $1,400 for the HLA. And then believe it or not, I got about 850 bucks for the Frontier. So for me, when I look at those prices, I see the Land Pride, the HLA are pretty close in price there. The Frontier is a major flyer, and that could just be bad data that I can find online, which there's not a lot of pricing out there, or it could be a sign of 
what goes into the manufacturing, what's included, the features, and so on, that's included with the Frontier Pusher. There could be a big difference, so keep it in mind. And so that Frontier product being so low, which again, Frontier is John Deere's kind of attachment branch, well, John Deere's not known for being cheap <laughs> or cheaper than the competition on anything. So it's a little bit of a red flag there. Let's talk about where these are manufactured, all right? So Land Pride is a US-based company out in Kansas. They have a huge manufacturing, R&D, everything that goes on out there. I don't know if they use uh, USA Steel in everything that they do, but I know that it includes a lot of USA labor. You know, and it's frustrating, right? I think a lot of these manufacturers that are based in the US and, and using a majority of US-based materials and labor, should be proud of that and they should boldly advertise that on their websites but it did not stick out to me when i was perusing their website today but regardless i know they're headquartered in kansas and so that's a good thing so hla is a canadian company they're manufactured up in ontario about six hours from where i'm at here in michigan but they make some very high quality uh, products out there for not just snow equipment but for regular landscaping three-point tools as well so while they may not be made in the usa they are made by our northern neighbor which i consider good friends and that's good enough for me Let's talk about Frontier for just a second because Frontier is not an actual manufacturer. And this is widely known. If you just do some Google searches, you'll see that there's a lot of different companies that white label products for Frontier. And that's not a bad thing either. So there's a lot of good aftermarket manufacturers out there. You know, take HLA or WorkSaver or Dirt Dog. You know, there's just these big uh, aftermarket equipment manufacturers out there that actually white label products for not just for Frontier, but for other manufacturers that are out there as well. You'll see as you start to look through spec sheets that a lot of the spec are identical. Sometimes they're just like a copy and paste from one manufacturer to another. Now I know that John Deere will sometimes um, have those manufacturers make specific tweaks or modifications to fit what they want and their criteria to make it unique for the Frontier line, but sometimes they are identical as well, but you'll oftentimes see those tags still on there. It might say older equipment, I've seen it say Woods or Machio or um, other brands that are out there, so they're <laughs> sometimes not even going to have a Frontier serial tag on there that could say uh, the parent manufacturer who actually created it. So that's a little bit of an explanation to basically say, I don't know who makes those snow pushers. Maybe somebody does, and I have a feeling that could change from contract to contract as John Deere goes through and will uh, go through negotiations and renew with different manufacturers and maybe try to get the best deal or you know just mix things up or whatever they want to do so it could vary but I do know that typically Frontier products are pretty high quality if we're talking about warranty this is going to be pretty standard across the board for all these guys it's going to be a one-year warranty that comes on uh, each one of these snow pushers the the Land Pride the HLA and the Frontier which is standard for probably 95% or more of the products that are in the subcompact and compact world. So nothing earth shattering there either way. But one thing I would like to point out is that I have sold well, into the thousands of these snow pushers from HLA, and I have never had a single warranty claim on any of them across the board. And there's the little tiny ones, there's the midsize, there's the big ones for all sorts of construction equipment. They are very, very, very well built. And I'm not putting Land Pride down or Frontier, I, I have sold some of those used historically over the years and never had issues with them hearing from customers, but for the kind of volume that I do with HLA, not having a single warranty claim on there is pretty unheard of. You know, and this is maybe a little bit of a tangent, but my brother and I were recently having lunch at, at a restaurant that we, we really love. They give us a great service every time and, you know, just kind of popped up in conversation that we need to leave a positive review for them. We need to be more aware of doing so. And I say all that because when I was researching the snow pushers here, you know, when I did some research on the Frontier, a, a negative video popped up about the Frontier snow pusher. And I think if you get wrapped up in seeing one negative review or maybe even two negative reviews of products that are sold in the thousands, you know, it can disproportionately sway your opinion in the wrong direction because it's so easy to get on there and when you're mad and upset about spending a lot of your money on, on a product and it doesn't perform like you think it should when Oftentimes these videos don't give you the full perspective. Maybe it wasn't used appropriately or, or maybe they just had a bad day. Every product, if you're selling thousands and thousands of them, could have a problem with it. And so I have the most experience with the HLA products and so that's where I can attest to they're having a very high quality with so far no warranty claims. So why I think these are all high quality and they probably have very minimal warranty claims overall is gonna be due to their construction, all right? So let's go over some of the general construction of these snow pushers here. And we'll start off with weight, which, you know, the Land Pride is a bit of an anomaly in this category and it weighs in, and again, we're, we're comparing just the basic pusher and the mount on there, okay? So your John Deere quick attach, or your Skidster quick attach, not the other, all the other fancy stuff on here, but the basic setup, is 190 pounds for the Land Pride. The HLA in that same setup is gonna be substantially more at 340 pounds. While surprisingly, 
Well, maybe. The Frontier is going to weigh about 400 pounds in that basic configuration. All right, so let's talk about dimensions here. And we already know the width, they're all 60 inches long, all right, but there's still a couple other critical dimensions, the height and the depth. So starting with the Land Pride, that unit is gonna be 18 inches high and 18 inches deep. If we move over to the HLA unit, that's gonna be 20 inches high and 18 inches deep. So pretty similar between these two. Now, if we go over to the Frontier, it was a little harder to get consistent information. And on, on John Deere's website, I found that they were 30 inches high, but on one of John Deere, the John Deere dealer's websites, I found they were 20 inches high. Now, I've seen enough of those snow pushers to think that the 30 inches is probably correct and perhaps leads us to the conclusion of why they weigh the most out of any of these pushers at 400 pounds. Now, they are still about 22 inches deep from what I could find, so not um, a huge disparity there, but that height is a big difference and could explain why they do weigh the most. Okay, but if we leave the Frontier alone, we kind of understand why that one weighs so much. It's a little bit of a different discussion between the Land Pride and the HLA. So these are almost dimensionally the same. This is two inches higher than the Land Pride, so that would explain a little bit of a weight increase. But this is 190 pounds, remember, and this is 340 pounds. So that's nearly an 80% increase in weight with this unit weighing more than the Land Pride. And so that weight has to come from somewhere. 80% is not a rounding error. That's a lot of additional material, uh, which means there's probably thicker steel in certain locations. There's more support bracing, uh, more robust framing on the backside. So again, we're doing a comparison and you have to come back to the big number, which is the pricing, right? And these two were pretty close in price, you know, 1300, 1400, right around there. And so that's gonna be a little different based on your dealer. But are you getting a lot more material, a lot more bang for your buck for that extra hundred bucks? There is one important construction detail that I love on all three of the snow pushers that we're talking about today. And that is gonna be the lack of corner bracing. Oftentimes you're gonna see tube steel on a lot of the other snow pushers out there that goes from the sidewall to the back wall on both sides. And that's a way that those companies are strengthening the sidewalls, giving it more rigidity and more structure. But it's also a great place to trap snow. <laughs> it just is an inferior way to design a product, in my opinion. And so none of the products that we're talking about today, the Land Pride, the HLA, or the Frontier, have that type of design. Oh, yeah. So you probably want to know, well, how are they getting that extra rigidity then if they don't have that cross brace? And it's a good look you can see here on the HLA, and I think they're all semi-similar to this, but they're gonna have something called a double wall construction. And so that's just a reinforced plate on the inside, welded in place there. And so that's where you're gonna get the extra strength you need to prevent it from bending and tweaking. So we're gonna wrap this up, spending a few minutes on product features, comparing what you can get from Land Pride, HLA, and Frontier. You know, and this is one of the main reasons that I love to be independent, to not be tied in and trapped with John Deere or Kubota and have to offer just the products that they have available because this gives me a lot of flexibility to go out into the open market and pick and choose products from different manufacturers. I don't feature and focus on every product from HLA. I kind of cherry pick certain products that I love that, that meet that trifecta of the quality, of the features, of the price point and make it all come together. And I'll take some from other manufacturers and I'll just discard the rest. And I can always order something from them if you want to, but I like to offer what I think is the best value for my customers. So my favorite feature of the HLA Snow Pusher is gonna be the back drag, which is this big hunk of steel that closes off the top of the pusher. And Land Pride has a similar back drag as well that it looks like, from what I can tell online, on at least the smaller Snow Pusher does close off the top, which is pretty cool. I will say from the pictures, I have not seen one of those back drags in person. It looks a little light, but that makes sense because they're pusher is lighter in general. If you look at the back drag on the HLA pusher, it just looks beefy. It has a very rugged and tough appearance to it, but it's good to know that on the Land Pride or the HLA, if you want to get a back drag on top, it's going to completely enclose the top of the pusher, unlike Frontier that we're going to talk about next, which is just a thin strip. Okay, so you're going to have a strip about this wide right here that's down towards the bottom, and that's going to be your back drag. So it's very easy for the snow to spill over. Frontier has a lot of good products. Their snow pusher, though, it's just very simple in design, I think is, is a good way to put it. There's just not a lot of thought behind it, and so that is something that's really lacking. If you do think you want to have a back drag on your pusher, you may want to consider the Land Pride or the HLA or if there's anybody else similar that makes them, I'm not aware. Let's talk about skid runners and the options on all these snow pushers. If we start out with the Land Pride, it looks like from the pictures they're going to have a bolt on skid runner, which is a good thing. It's not going to be a big chunky um, skid runner like this one, but they're going to have a flat 
plate on the bottom of their snow pusher and that skid runner appears to be just a bolted on flat plate that just goes right on underneath it. So the difference with the HLA is the fact that you can see this is a, a UHMW or a poly skid runner here and this is going to be an upcharge but the basic skid runner is going to be steel and it's going to be very similar in the construction. It's gonna be a whole huge uh, bolted on uh, slotted piece of material that, that you can adjust up and down. So if you want your main cutting edge to make contact with the ground, you can adjust these so that the cutting edge is hitting. If you wanna have that cutting edge raised up, say you're on gravel and you don't wanna scrape all your gravel and your stone into the yard, you can adjust these skid runners so that that main edge is just you know a half inch or an inch above and so you're, you're scraping just above the stone. From what I can tell and what I've seen on the Frontier Snow Push, there is no replaceable skid runner on there. It is a welded in place ski that just sits underneath the side. So having it welded in place means there's no opportunity for adjustment and once you wear through it, what do you do then? And so on that note, while the Land Pride does have that bolted on steel skid runner option, it does not look like it's adjustable. It's still fixed position so you can't adjust the blade up and down. One of the other options I saw noted on there though was a plastic or a poly UHMW option that you can add on. I don't know how that goes on there if you do get some adjustment out of it, but it's nice to have that option if you want it. So quickly expanding on the bolt-on skid runners that the HLA product offers, if we talk about the other bolt-on components on some of these snow pushers, you are gonna have a potential bolt-on skid steer frame for the back of the Land Pride a snow pusher because you can get that with a, a specific Kubota quick attach or maybe a pinned on version but you can also get it with their skid steer quick attach. On the HLA you will have bolted on frames on the back side so for you guys with a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach or a global quick attach or one of the few others that are out there or even if you need a custom pinned on mount we're able to fulfill more orders by bolting on different frames on the back side and get them shipped out to you a lot quicker. With the Frontier Snow Pusher, as to be expected, that frame is going to be welded onto the backside for a John Deere Quick Attach, which they're a John Deere product, so I wouldn't expect anything different. Now, all of the back drags are going to be bolted on, so you will see in all of these different lineups, they're going to have bolt holes in them so that if you want to add on a back drag down the road, you have the ability to do so. And from what I can tell, they are all going to have a bolted on main cutting edge, and that's a great thing. You want that to be replaceable. And the other benefit of that is that if you wear out one side you can unbolt it flip it around and use the other side too to get double the life as far as bolt on for the back drag if you want to get an edge on there i could not get a very good look at either the frontier or the land pride to see if you can bolt on an extra edge if you want to you may be stuck with the integrated steel edge, which is the basic configuration for the HLA as well. Now I do know that the HLA pushers come pre-drilled on their back drag. As you can see these bolt holes here, so you can add on a replaceable edge if you want to. You'll see the UHMW we have on here, but you can also get a bolt on steel edge or rubber as well. And this may seem a little bit rudimentary, but let's talk about the back wall of all three of these snow pushers. We'll start with the Land Pride, which appears to have a couple of bends in it, so it's not completely flat, but will help perhaps roll that snow forward and keep it moving a little bit. If you take a close look at the HLA pusher, you're gonna see it's been formed and bent continuously to give it almost a complete radius. And so that's gonna be very beneficial as you are moving along with that snow continuing to build and roll and just keep the momentum going, making it easier to push snow with the tractor. And I suspect that a feature such as this is what's gonna probably drive this cost up a little bit and help make it the most expensive option out of the three. And if we take a look at the Frontier Snow Pusher, you're gonna see that's a pretty simple design all around, just straight walls, that's what you see. Hey, well, that's gonna wrap it for us today. Hopefully this gives you a good look, a good visual, kind of side by side side comparing some specs of so some OEM, some aftermarket and seeing what will give you the most bang for your buck and be the right setup for you. Now I'd like to summarize by saying again I am not a John Deere or a Kubota dealer or slash Land Pride and Frontier. <laughs> the associated brands I am an independent dealer so I don't even have the opportunity to sell those but again this video and videos like it are generated by repeated questions that you guys submit to me so i'm trying to give you an apples to apples comparison of course i'm biased i want you to buy this snow pusher but i want to put it in perspective with just real data real terms and not put my opinion into it i think you guys can take this information compile it and make your own sound decision and just feel a lot better about it i'd encourage you if you want to see some future videos maybe see the results of this spray test that we did make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and if you want to get something for your tractor maybe an HLA snow pusher, maybe something else. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Don't forget, we can ship all over the country. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.